I suppose time to have a bit of a hurling chat now, and I'd just like to, you know, you all know uh, Jackie and Ursula. Jackie and Ursula, would you mind joining us here on stage and we'll, uh, we'll get to the, the heart of the matter. <laughs> Jackie, I suppose just before we look ahead to the championship, do the, apart from Limerick, do the teams, do the rest of the teams know where they're actually at? Because the league was such a nearly a, a phony war, uh, not much intensity to it. Usually you had a good read coming into the championship where you might have been. Is it the case this year? Uh, I'd say it's a mixed bag, Damon. I'd say there's certain teams. Uh, I'd say Kilkenny are a long road on nailing down who their, their 15 are and what they're about. They're still learning with obviously Derek being there now. Um, I think Watford are still, I'd still would have liked to think that, although didn't get to another or a league semi final, they would have liked another game to develop what they're about. Um, I think Wexford might be a little concerned. Mm. Um, I think Dublin are probably as good as they're kind of going to be at the end of the league. So I'd say a mixed bag. Um, the big narrative is we're just looking through the prism of Limerick's eyes, really. That's, that's the benchmark. They have progressed since last year. Uh, the big difference on last year is that they have Peter Casey and the best hurler in the country back. And he's not just back, just hitting the ground running and building it up. He was the difference in, in, in the game against Tipperary. I thought he was man of the match, so they have gone to another level. So the question is, can people match Limerick? That's not the question. Is Can they match what they did last year and push it on again? Because they've definitely gone to another level. That's what the challenge is for everyone. And I think it's really, really interesting, the, the, the concept of this weekend and getting an exact idea of where the closest challengers to Limerick last year in Kilkenny, where they are in, in that journey. Can they be stopped, Ursula? Because they've brought in Mylan, O'Neill, English. The bench is stronger than it was at any time over the last four years. Casey's back as well. I think internally they're happier than they have been in a long time. Do you think they can be stopped to 2023? Well, it's far, looking at them throughout the league, it's hard to say that they'll be stopped because they're probably hurling better than ever. They're free from injuries. You know, as, as Jackie said, they've got the big names back, Peter Casey, Keane Lynch, but also the difference, even looking at the lads like Adam English, Cahill O'Neill, Colin Coughlin, Shane O'Brien, all these guys, you could name another five or six, mm. they seem to have even developed their game even further. And that competition of places seems to drive them on because I think any of them, you know, you, you probably couldn't even name the the six forwards at the moment because they've had so many different guys in throughout the league who have really, really impressed. And I think that's the biggest thing and the, the biggest luxury for John Kiley and his management team that they have such, uh, you know, an array of talent. They have so many options, so many choices. And at the moment, they're free from injury. And that's what some of the other teams are getting caught with at the moment. And strength and depth is the big one. And Limerick have that in, in bucket loads. Do you know, that's the funniest thing because I wonder, take me into the mindset then, Jackie. Like, you've been on that team, Declan referred to it the greatest team of all time what are they thinking now how do you stay at the top if you're Limerick um, I suppose the way we thought and I, I believe they're the same without sounding arrogant the outside in the competition is irrelevant we believed and I would firmly believe that Limerick feel if they turn up every game mentally and physically prepared they beat everyone and possibly beat the pick of the country that's how good they are at the minute so I don't think they look outside the group. I think they look inside the group. And it's about driving standards and literally just getting a jersey. And I'd say it's savage. And Ursa makes up a really good point. You look at Co Colum Coughlin, a specimen of a guy, a kind of a stereotypical of Kyle Hayes. Had a really good Fitzgibbon campaign. Is hurling really well, played well against Tipperary. If he has another league final, a good league final the weekend, he's probably third in the pecking order for left half back. Because Kyle Hayes is probably going to be number one. Dan Morrissey could struggle to get in there somewhere, and then you've Colin Coughlin. That's the level of talent and competition we're, we're, we're looking at. So I'd say it's about driving standards. I'd say it's very player-driven. I'd say Paul Knurk is very hands-off, but uh, hands-on. But I'd say John Kiley just lets them and lets them drive each other. That's what Brian did with us. And if you need to step in every so often, if, if the standard was dropping off or individuals were, were, were taking the foot off the gas, he'd step in, call lads ashore, and drive it on again. I would say there's an unbelievable belief, confidence in that group. And there's a certain thing. I remember in 2012 when Galway came up and cleaned us in the Leinster final. That gave us such a smack in the jaw that we needed to learn from that, that every time you turn up, you have a target on your back and you have an expectation to be at your best. And I believe that same thing that happened us happened to Limerick when Kilkenny bet him in the All-Ireland semi-final in 2019. And since then, they've been at operating at a level of consistency, 90, 95%, sometimes even 100%. I think it was the worst thing Kilkenny actually did. 
I don't think they gave him a, a kick in the backside. I actually think they slapped him in the mouth. They went off. They looked at it. They looked internally at, it, at themselves and said, we have an accountability every time we take to the field, whether it's, it's a Watford Crystal or an all Ireland final, we're going flat to the mat. Come here, it hasn't done you any harm now either, to be fair. Getting to that level, getting to an all Ireland final, league finals. You know, this level of competition for Kilkenny has been pretty good too. Yeah, it has. It's been really strong. It's not at that level. And we have to be fair to Derek. He's only in the job probably four or five months. But there is probably six, seven guys that you could cast a net over and go, look, any of these six or seven guys could come into this team. This Brian left this team in a really good place. Tej is a bit away. Adrian Mullen is a bit away. I don't think they'll, they'll risk either the two of them because two weeks later you've, you've the round robin starting. Owen Cody, I feel, will come back into the weekend. But you look at David Blanchfield, Derek Corcoran, Billy Drennan, even Garrow Dunn off the bench. John Donnelly has come back into a form. So, quietly, Derek, below the radar, is doing a lot of good work. Hasn't changed a huge amount. Probably just has maybe evolved the short game a little more. Um, you know, to Kenny were doing that, it was just probably cast under that Brian Cody at times would come out and this big long ball will go in so people will kind of go, oh, they're going back to route one. He was doing that already, so Derek has probably just accelerated that a little further. If you're, if you're one of the other teams then, Ursula, do you go and have a cut at Limerick and leave yourself a bit vulnerable or open? And the reason I ask that is, you look around at the hurling landscape at the moment and a lot of the clinical inside forwards have been taken away from the, in the inside forward line. It's gone so tactical that nearly have the likes of Desi Hutchinson and these guys playing as a, a playmaker. Um, and can you actually have a go at Limerick with, with, with a system like that? How do you think the game has gone tactically and is anybody well set to press Limerick this year? Well, I think that's the important word, pressing on Limerick, because we saw even in the, the final last year the space that was given to that Limerick half-forward line. I think they got 113 from play. Yeah. And Kilkenny wouldn't be able to afford to do the, the same kind of tactics on Sunday in the league final because given the likes of Groad Hegarty, Tom Morrissey, Keen Lynch, three of the best hurlers possibly out there in Ireland, uh, giving them that time and space. So I think it's about learning how, how do you cut out that space? Do you press up on, on, on those players? You know, I heard Joe Cannon speak speak about in the, in the last couple of weeks and he was saying why not take the chance why not take the risk but then obviously if you do that and you push up on a player mm. like them you've got lethal inside forwards like Peter Casey and Aaron Galan and that inside so it's finding that balance um, it involves a huge amount of work rate and obviously you need to get your tactics spot on because in the open space of Crow Park or Tarlis if you give these guys a moment uh, they'll just punish you and that's Limerick that's the ruthless streak that's in this Limerick team um, in terms in terms of who's probably best placed to maybe topple them, you know, I think Clare have been up and down in the league. Uh, they were probably the closest team that came to toppling them last year. But um, for me, I still think there's potential there in Galway. You know, I, I think we haven't seen the, the full potential in some of the teams. Cork, in the opening round, we were all singing their praises after getting one over on Limerick. Mm. But it's the consistency. Can they bring that to championship? Um, and it's a very difficult route because if you have to play Limerick maybe once, twice, in the championship, when do you want to beat him? Is it in a Munster opener or is it in an All Ireland final? And it'll be very hard to beat them twice in one year. That's the, that's the fun, isn't it? Well, I, I think you have to try and test yourself, don't you, Jackie? Like from a, an up and coming team, you'd want to play Limerick as many times as possible exactly. this year and maybe learn. What do you think? What do you think maybe of the shape that the, the game has at the moment as well? I suppose you want to beat Limerick this weekend. You don't want to beat them, that you give them fuel, <laughs> that they go away and they put a post circle Kenny up in the wall and go, when we get these, we'll tear them to shreds. So that's the kind of conundrum. But um, I suppose I suppose from Kenny's point of view this, this weekend, you, you want to test yourself against Limerick and know that your guys are asked to test against it. So David Blanchfield, the guys I spoke about, Billy Drennan, like he's going up against either Barry Nash or Sean Finn. We'll know exactly how good Billy Drennan is come four o'clock on Sunday because he's going up against two of the best cornerbacks in the country. So for Derek, he'll be driving the standards of we have an unbelievable opportunity, we have a free shot, let's have a go at these lads, let's press them, let's back Tommy Welsh, let's, let's back Parik Welsh against Aaron Galan and Peter and Casey inside, let's test them and see can we do it. We did, it to a, we did a lot of good in the All-Ireland final last year, we just dropped off with kind of 10, 15 minutes to go and we just didn't see it out of the line. So... Can we learn from that? And what are the learnings from it as regards... I thought we got the match-up wrong with Garrow at Hague. I think Paddy Deegan needs to be taken off after 20 minutes mm. and, and swapped and brought someone on to him. So, you know, what will the match-up be with him? Paddy Deegan's gone to the forwards this year. David Blanchfield did a really good job when he came on the All-Ireland final last year. So we'll know more about him this weekend. So you have to... It's a league final. This is Kilkenny-like. If, 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 like, I know Derek is in the, in, in the, in the job... 
But like if Kilkenny go up there and they're watery this weekend, that's not good enough. That's like Kilkenny people will let them know about that. They have a duty to have a real call off, off Limerick this weekend. What's Limerick's mindset then? Crush him. It's like Alex <laughs> Ferguson, like when Man United were there, they just wanted to beat everyone. If they were playing Wimbledon or anything like that, and it was a dog fight, they go and they crush them. You keep their head under the water. Why give Kilkenny any bit of confidence or optimism for the championship? They beat them in the All-Ireland last year. You know, and it'll still be fresh in their memory 2019 because Limerick haven't beaten that often. So one of the teams that beat them was Kilkenny and, you know, the 65 that wasn't 65. That could be a motivation factor to this team. So keep everyone below the parapet. It's a, it's, and it's and a I think the thing final. for me as well, Limerick are constantly being compared to the great Kilkenny mm -hmm. team because, you know, of their dominance in the last couple of years. And I think that's an added motivation too because they want to nearly propel themselves to be considered greater than this great Kilkenny great team. So well, well, let's see if they can be then, Jackie. I guess that's the big pick. So who's uh, yours for the All-Ireland Final? Limerick to be the greatest team of all time, yeah? <sighs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a really sneaky feeling for Galway. Right. I really do. Um, I love you. Do you know, by the way, you go through half an hour chat, come in and have a cup of tea, yeah. say nothing about Galway, and then at the end, oh yeah, by the way, they're going to win. Well, they this is complete they... Kilkenny tactics all over again. Are they now. consistent enough? I feel, if you look at last year, Kilkenny definitely did, Claire put it up to him. I feel Galway were so close mm. to last year. I think they showed a model of press and Limerick and back in their full back line. I feel they needed a few new players. I, I think they have got him this year. Henry, he was lukewarm with the, with the league. You've seen him having a crack yeah. with, with, with John Kyle. I think he's coming with something strong. Will they win in All-Ireland? Oh, God, I, I'd give him a great chance. I really would. The thing is, you can only beat probably Limerick once. Yeah. And I just feel the Munster teams, if they did beat him, that they'll just wallop him if they come on later on in the championship. So I think it has to be a Leinster. But then there's two Leinster people here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm going to go with Limerick. I think they're getting better. Um, and we even saw in the league semi-final, they were at this level. And when Tip pressed on them, they went to the next stage. So I think the, the best is yet to come with Limerick. Um, so Limerick for me. All right, brilliant. Well, put your hands together, please, for our hurling panel, Ursula Jacob and Jackie Tyrrell. So you